Hello guys and welcome to this quick video uh, about how to create some uh, some props and uh, we're gonna make a shield uh, this uh, in this video okay so I'm gonna start with the sphere uh, you want to make sure that you're making polymesh 3d before you do anything right hit W to go to move and then you can go to the customize and you can choose any primitive here okay okay you can see yeah, it's kind of like a weird way, right? You have the transform tool that, that allows you to create stuff. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go for a Sphere 3D. And right, that's going to give us a Sphere, basically. Now I'm going to go back to uh, uh, sculpting uh, by using whatever brush, right? Uh, here I'm going to choose Control and drag to mask the bottom part. Control W to give that a group. Control Shift and click on that and do a delete hit. And I want this shield to be a little bit more flattened, so I can use the transpose to scale it on the z-axis. Okay, now just to make the shield look a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna go holding down Control Shift. Oh, and of course, yeah, holding down Control Shift and change your brush to slice curve. And I'm gonna slice out the bottom part by using slice curve. What you do is holding down Control Shift and then drag a curve out, and then you can release your uh, buttons on the keyboard. Keep holding down the left mouse button or your pen on the, the tablet, right? And that way you can move the line in a free way. If you're holding down shift, it's gonna snap every five degrees. Release shift will allow you to have a free movement. You can hold down space to change the position of the line. I'm gonna place it somewhere here. You can hit the alt button once to have a turn. You can hit it twice to have a sharp turn, like that. So what I need to do is to cut out a uh, an arc like this. Mm, maybe something. See more like this. Yeah. And I want to be mirrored to the other side. This is going to be modified topology mirroring weld. Underneath geometry. Modified topology mirroring weld. Uh, if it's not mirroring to the right direction, then you have to go ahead and do the uh, deformation mirror first. And then you do geometry mirroring weld. Okay. C control shift and click on the middle piece. That's the one I want. That want to keep and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a delete hidden that's gonna be underneath again the modified topology delete hidden and this is a customized menu I created just to quickly go through a lot of commands for example that mirror and mirror weld you can see they're right next to each other however in the actual menu you have to go down to the deformation click on the mirror and then go back to geometry and click on mirror weld that's a lot of steps <laughs> okay alrighty so I have something like this as the base uh, of the shield. Okay. So now before I dip into uh, other details, I'm gonna create a uh, a, a metal metal uh, circle in the middle. <laughs> so let me go holding on control and, and uh, drag a square and holding on space and drag it over to the middle. To mask that, control W to give it a group. Okay. And then let me control shift. Mm, I guess I don't need to do that. BZM to go to Z modeler. Holding down space and change the operation to go for extrude poly group all. Click and drag to extrude out. Holding down space to have a copy of that while I'm you're dragging. Okay, I'm gonna go do that again to have some thickness. Go higher here, then I can do like a bevel or something like that to bevel this edge. All right, and then I can also extrude. Right, I'll hover the cursor on any of the this bluish loop here, holding on space, and change that to poly loop. And make sure that you choose the right direction. The direction of this uh, yellow line will determine which direction of a loop that will be extruded. So I'm gonna go for this way. All right. Okay, and then let I me mean, just go one more loop and then extrude out from here to have some nice looking edges. I'm holding down D button to smooth preview it. Okay, this is what I have in the middle. Okay, not looking very good yet. So, anything, anyway, I want to do is also, what I want to do is also to get uh, those two things separated. It's gonna be underneath sub two, split two parts. This is gonna split the model based on connectivity which will give you uh, basically the this one and this one. All right, for this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use move, holding down alt and holding down left mouse button, drag that to move the center point outwards. Okay, and BDM to go to Z modeler, hover the cursor on an edge 
and holding down space, go for insert, single attribute, click and drag to her, have a loop there. And then I'm, I'm going to extrude in uh, for this piece. That's going to give me something that looks a bit more fancier. Uh, let me make this thing make this thing smaller. <coughs> okay, All right. So some metal piece in the middle. Okay, All right. Uh, I guess I can also bevel this a bit more, just to ease the pain of the problem I'm seeing in the middle. <laughs> that will make it look better. Uh, still have a, having a dot in there. It would be better to actually re apologize this part. Actually, <laughs> let me try to smooth that. Yeah, it's not gonna look very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I have to live with that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude out. Uh, I want to make this thing a little bit more flat. So what I can do is extrude poly loop inwards, holding down shift. That's gonna actually push the faces inwards. Let me do that here too. Oh, I don't like that, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this edge loop complete. Let's carry that. Just do some minor tweaking, right, to make it look a bit better. Okay, I uh, need to go back out now. Okay. I also want to add some bolts on this thing, so I'm gonna go use the insert industry parts or uh, closing part. I think there's some nice looking buttons. So let me choose this one. Okay. Now I wanted to then go to the transform, turn on the symmetry, but this time it's going to be Z-direction radial symmetry with 8. That way when I click and drag, you can see I'm adding 8 of them in one go. Right, I can also use move up, up, up afterwards, holding down Alt and click to reset the orientation, and also Alt click there to reset the pivot. Mm. Oh, I guess I cannot really do that. Let me use move then. <laughs> Move those things out. Ah, it's not very easy actually. Well, let's redirect re this thing then. <laughs> it would be easier to do it that way. I think they're just not in the right place. Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit more higher. Yeah, okay. Alright, that's some detail here in the middle. For the shield, of course, I want something on the outside as well, right? For this part, I'm gonna have to have a better topology. This is not looking good, so I'm gonna go for a zero measure here. So this will be underneath geometry, zero measure, and then uh, zero measure. This is gonna give me something better if you turn on symmetry and do that. This is gonna do something a little bit more, uh, uh, more uh, in a symmetrical way, right? Uh, I think that poly count, of course, is too high. So maybe let me go for same and see what we have. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So this is gonna be the plate, right? The plate. Uh, I think it will be made by wood. Okay, but let, let's not worry too much about that yet. Where's my stuff? Yeah, it's hidden. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do here afterwards is to have some edging here. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is to have a duplicate of this model. Okay, for the duplication. I'm gonna go for BZM Z modeler to extrude out all polygons. Extrude all polygons while you have the cursor on the face, right? Extrude out the whole thing. And you can see it's flipped, right? So what I have to do here is go to the display properties and then flip them. Okay. Right. And then what I can do is extrude out from the edge, uh poly loop. And, right, to have the actual edging. Oh, actually, I need to get that duplicated. Uh, I guess I don't have to. Let's do that. Uh, let's do it this way, actually. Uh, Control Shift and click on that, and again, go to the back, and again here. That's going to give me just the edge. I'm going to go ahead and do a delete hidden. That's again underneath modify topology, underneath geometry. Modify topology, delete hidden. Okay. Oops. Right, and then I can go extrude out the thickness, so give me something, just the edge, and afterwards I can just bring them forward for the edging of this piece. Okay, and then I can do some tricking here to have some fun, right, by inserting some edge loop. Uh, I guess what I can do is to uh, add one in here. Oh, let me, uh, yeah, add one in here, and extrude out the loop on the bottom to give it some nice padding in there. And that's looking cool. Okay, and I also wanted to maybe bevel, bevel this, so that it's kind of like having a tighter 
corner in there, same thing will have to be done in here as well. Right. Okay. And also maybe for the outside, I can also give it some more detail by using insert to have a edge loop and then extrude the poly loop out. Okay. And then maybe to make it look a little bit more harsh, I can bevel the edge in here. Okay, now we'll make it look harsher. And this almost look like a nice looking shield. Now for the middle piece, of course, uh, we'll have to give it thickness, right? So I'm gonna go for BDM to go to Z modeler, have to extrude the poly group, uh, polygon, our polygon in to have the thickness. To be aware that this is flipped, so I need to flip it back. This again underneath mod, uh, display properties and then flip. In here I have that in my quick menu custom menu out menu also okay it looks like I need to go further in here so what I can do is go for extrude poly group all I know that this backside is a different group so I can click and drag to extrude all but I can hold it down shift to change that extrusion into a moving operation okay right you can hit D button again to smooth preview Alright, that's almost there. So one thing I want to do is to add some nice looking decorations to the uh, to the piece in the middle. Uh, for example, this could be made of wood planks, right? So let me control D to subdivide this a few more times until I have 1.8 million, maybe uh, maybe for for 400 400 uh, K would be fun. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's probably enough. We'll have to see. <laughs> okay, so I've then have to go to the surface noise, make it facing you this way. Uh, click on R file. You can load some images. I have something downloaded already, but they're very easy to find. Just like a wooden plank uh, image like that. I'm gonna open that. Okay, okay. I can then control the alpha scale. I can change the uh, mixed base noise so it's not mixed by the base noise. Uh, yeah, alpha scale, right, something something reasonable like that much maybe. Go ahead and hit it. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go do a uh, mask by noise. This will give me a mask, and then I can use inflate to determine how much I want to go. So it's gonna be underneath display uh, a deformation and then inflate. I can inflate uh, in inwards like that. Yeah, that should be enough. And then I can clear the mask. Right, that's gonna give me this uh, wooden texture in here. Well, of course, this can also be done in Substance Spinner, right? Or you can bake it as normal map. Uh, some of the few things you can do here in a non-procedural way, but you can say, okay, this is not deep enough for me, so you can mask these guys and make them go deeper. Control click to reverse that, and then I can go for inflate. Just a bit more. That's already too much. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna inflate maybe. Yeah, let's try the one, right? And then clear that. That's gonna make those uh, those planks looks uh, deeper, basically. Alrighty. Now we can have some more fun to decorate this. For example, I can create some uh, nice looking uh, decoration like uh, metal pattern in there. So what I can do is to go to sub two and insert uh, another plane, I guess. Uh, it's facing to the wrong direction. Let me hold it on shift while dragging to rotate it. Okay, and make it smaller so it's matching with the shape. The, the shape. Okay, alrighty. And then also what I can do is to cut out the plane the same way. Mirror and weld, right? Uh, cut the bottom out and cut the top out. Okay, and then just shift and click on that, delete hidden, mirror and weld just to make it symmetrical. And then do a zero measure here. 
uh, to create some 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 shape, right? That's gonna allow me to go for half, maybe. Yeah, allow me to apply some texture on it. Okay, this is basically the same shape as before. <laughs> it's not bended though. Yeah, probably I can probably make it just bended in the first place uh, by stealing from the old one. But I lost that already, so why not? Let, let me just do something new, right? So I have this guy here. Let me uh, drag it forward. Okay. And uh, I want to do is to apply the pattern on it. So let me control D to subdivide it one, two, three, four times, six times, maybe. Let me do one more time. 1.8 million. Okay, because I want to apply something a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go for surface noise again, uh, alpha. I'm going to choose this guy now. This is going to be another pattern I downloaded from the internet and I'm gonna lower down the alpha scale so it's maybe this much okay and I'm gonna do a, uh, uh, a mix space noise to zero and hit okay okay and then control W to give this a group right oh well I have to mask by noise before I do that <laughs> okay and then control shift and click on the pieces that I want to keep and do a delete hidden I have to get rid of the subject levels of course so geometry delete lower and then delete hidden I want to apply this pattern of course on the surface of the model but you can see this is arced and this is not okay to fix that I first need to get a cleaner arc so it's probably easier to go back through history <laughs> okay before I project that and go back to this guy and I'm gonna use this uh, new brush uh, we haven't talked about before matchmaker and then use that and just uh, click and drag on the, on the model <coughs> to match it to the underneath geometry okay oh I don't want it to be affected by the these two things so let me turn them off let me try this again click and drag right that's gonna match the model to there Okay. Oh, you can also see the outset is not doing the right thing. Uh, I guess it's easier to actually just cut them out again here. Just not really see the, the part we don't really need. Uh, so let me do that real quick. Using the slice curve to slice them first. Right, control shift and click on that. I'm gonna do a delete hidden <coughs> and then click and drag to apply that. Okay, that looks better. Okay. And also I wanted to deal with something a little bit more simpler. You can see they're not very clean on the edge, right? That's one of the downside of ZBrush. You have to work with geometry, not texture, so you have resolution limitations more than what substance can do. But we can uh, fix that by doing like a deformation polish by feature and drag that up. Now we'll polish the edge and make them smoother. Right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, zero measure here with the half of the polygon and see what I have. <laughs> okay, so this is basically making a model, right? I'm making a model and then we can use it as our advantage, right? We can create some, some uh, nice uh, cutting like this, nice decoration like this, okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go move it closer to the plate, right? And I can also give it actual thickness by going to geometry, poly loop, edge loop, and there is a final loop. You click on that to extrude things out, but you can see this is extruding out too much, right? It's too much bevel happening, so I'm gonna lower down the bevel to 20, thickness to 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0.0025 a quarter of the original size. That's how many loops you will have in the middle. I'm gonna change that to three loops. Should be enough for me. Panel loop. You can see now this is what I have. Okay. The good thing about the though is that you're able to control those kind of like babbling thing. It's not gonna be that easy in substance packages. Um, I'm gonna change that to maybe 50 uh, panel loop. Mm. Yeah, that's actually better. I like that kind kind of uh, loop here. And now you can see we have this nice decoration added in. Uh, with everything back in place and that goes back to its history we'll have this nice looking uh, uh, shield okay now of course uh, you can control things like okay what if I don't want it to be happening anywhere 
I can get rid of some of the things, right? Like I don't like what's happening maybe on this edge. Uh, they're actually not a, not exactly in there, so I can move them. <laughs> okay. Now you can see advantages of ZBrush in this case. You're dealing with geometry, you can do a lot of things, like moving them, for example, since it wouldn't be that easy uh, in substance packages. I probably don't have to do this, though, in there if you're texturing it. Uh, using substance height map. <laughs> uh, also, uh, you guys can try to use, uh, try to experiment with this tool called Houdini, because uh, it's able to do those things in a more procedural way. <laughs> that could be easier, actually. Anyway, because of our setup is based on geometry, we can quickly lay out a few things that we don't want to have. So what I can do is scrolling down Control Shift and change my selection to select rectangular. And then I can grab a few things, like uh, maybe I don't want to be happening on the corner here. I can grab these guys and uh, Control Shift and drag, and then Control Shift A. And then I can just keep hiding those things I don't want. Maybe I want just the ones in the middle. So I just select the parts. I just need to touch the parts, not all of them, just part of them that I want to get rid of. Control Shift and click. Uh, Control Shift and drag to reverse that. Control Shift A to grow up. Right, that's going to be the ones I can uh, I can actually get rid of. Right, so Control Shift and drag to reverse that. <coughs> and then I can do a delete. Hit, right, probably getting rid of too much though. <laughs> you see the idea, right? Uh, I think this is. Mm, let me uh, have some of these guys, maybe. Maybe I want something more in there. Right. <coughs> and then I can do a delete hidden. <coughs> okay. To get rid of these guys. And now I have just that. Okay. So this may have some more benefits. Uh, in this case, you can select those uh, various pieces. And of course, I can maybe try a mirror and see how this looks like. Yeah, that's cool. It uh, looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <coughs> and then uh, you can keep on adding new things. I think one more thing I want to add, maybe something, some uh, some nest. Uh, if I can show you that, I want something like that on the edge. You know, those are nice belts on the edge. And the question is, how do I do that? Okay. <coughs> Oh, we can we can leverage the curve brush in the brush. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to make a section of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go go ahead and change that to a plan and hit W and go to Poly Cube. I have to make Poly Mesh 3D, of course, and then yeah, Poly Cube. All right, that's the cube. Okay, uh, let's see what do I have. Oh, a lot of polygons. Maybe not that much here. Uh, maybe not much here. How about just a cube? Yeah, that's fine. BDM to go to the modeler. I'm gonna go for a delete a single poly. Scatter that, that, and that. Okay. Okay. All right. And then let me also turn on double. So that's gonna be underneath display properties double. All right, display property double. Okay. All right. And then I'm gonna go uh, turn off perspective when I'm gonna shift and change my brush to slice curve. I just need to slice out the curve in here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to this angle, mask that. It's hard to see actually. Am I masking it? Then go to this angle, then mask that, control click to reverse the mask, and that's how I select things sometimes. And then I can hit W to to move and just drag them in. All right. And then I want this guy to go further, so go to extrude a single poly, click and drag, holding on shift to move it further. And this is gonna be one sections. Okay. And then I'm also gonna mask that, control click. And control click again to to blur the mask. Uh, it's not that easy actually. <laughs> I want this it to be shifted, so I'm gonna do it this way then. And manually. I guess it, it would be easier to actually create this turning. Uh, later, but yeah, I'll drag that over here. Okay, that's basically one section of that. Okay, 
Alright, and then I can give it some decorations by bubbling it and click there to do the same amount. This is fine. Yeah, and I can go for BGM to go to Z modeler and extrude out the whole thing. Turn off double so it's easier for you to judge uh, are you getting the right direction or not. This is not looking very good though. You can see <laughs> this extrusion is not looking quite nice. So, um, can probably go extrude. Mm. Yeah, this is actually something I may need to take a look at how can I can do this better. I can probably do that after I did the movement. Yeah, that would be easier actually. So let me uh the after I do the X-ray. So I do the X-ray first, <laughs> And then I'll do a bevel here. And then I do the shifting. Could be better. No, uh, no, it's not gonna get be better because of the things I have to face. Uh, I guess I have to manually take it. No big deal. No big deal. Just tweak. And this doesn't have to be perfect, anyways. Right? They're kind of like organic in some sense. Good enough. All right, I have this piece now. Oh, I guess the easier way would be just uh, use the clip curve. <laughs> we'll be able to clip them. Anyway, let's not go go to that route. And this is this is already good enough. So I'm gonna maybe bevel the edge here too, just to make it looks like it's uh, it's good enough here. Um, yeah, I may need to bevel that more here actually. So. Let me do a slide edge loop complete, get it over here. I can mirror it if I wanted to by doing a wide direction mirror weld. No, it has to be a, a Z direction, I guess. Yeah. And then this may have a little budge. Okay, yeah, that should be enough. Should be enough for me <laughs> doing all those uh, tweaks. So that's gonna be one section, right? I can then go ahead and go for a uh, brush, create insert mesh, hit new, and then turn on the stroke curve mode. And that's gonna allow me to draw out a curve, which will repeat this piece, right? Now, of course, uh, you can go ahead and change the distance here, right? Curve steps, 1.5. That will make them uh, closer, maybe that's too close. Uh, 0.6. Yeah, that's going to be uh, the repetition I need for this guy, right? So how can I apply it to my model then? I'm just go back here to the actual model, right? And then what I can do is grab uh, this piece on the outside, and I want to figure out where do I want to place it. Okay, maybe I want to place it at everywhere, or maybe, maybe, or maybe just part of it. Okay, so let me BDM to go to Z modeler, and then holding down Alt and drag to select the parts that I want to have those pieces, right? And then I'm gonna go for a extrude. A single poly now because I'm using a selection first. This is gonna apply that on all the white ones. Click and drag, holding on control to have a copy of that. Okay. Alrighty, and then I'm gonna control shift and click on that and do a split hidden. That's gonna be mod underneath the modified topology split hidden. That's gonna be another way you can. Oh, actually not there. It's split hidden here. So it's gonna be another way for you to separate models. Okay. Alright, and then I'm gonna go for BDM to go to the modeler. I'm gonna go ahead and create a insert to insert a curve, holding down space and use crease edge loop complete to crease the edge. The reason I do that is because then I can convert that into a curve by going to stroke curve functions and then free mesh free, free mesh by uh, creased edges. All right, and then I can use this curve brush and click on it to apply the, the thing. It's too small now. 
turn off symmetry. Yeah, that's going to be how I can apply it. But you can see this is further away from the actual model. It could be bigger also. Yeah, it's too far away from the actual model. Right, so what I can do is to change the depths by going to brush, depths, and drag it down. You can see this will make it go deeper. Right, not deep enough, so keep on going down until it's in the right place. Yeah, it's about in the right place. I can move it in a bit more, I guess. Now the curve is still in there though. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a stroke, curve, and there's a delete and frame again, I guess. Yeah, that would make it work. Right. Uh, we go backwards just a little bit. Yeah, you don't have to redo, just click to update it. Yeah, maybe go up just a little bit more. Yeah, that's good enough. And then we can click on the model to finish it, and to shift and click on the purple piece, and again, and we can do a delete hidden. Right, and now I have these uh, straps. Okay, uh, they have some tilting, I guess nothing is perfect. <laughs> Let me give it some help maybe, just to make them look better. I guess it's kind of like because of the geometry. It's probably easier if I do a zero measure that will make it better on that piece. But you know, I can fix it by dragging. The goal is to make the lines being perpendicular to the direction of the shape and have some irregularities. It's fine too, right? Why not? Because those are not perfect shapes. Uh, let me do a mirror, mirror world to fix that. Huh, I don't know what's going on in there. That's weird. Do a delete hidden. Let me do that again. Mirror, mirror and world. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I don't know what's going on before, but it's okay now. Okay, that's kind of like another detail I can add to this piece of model. All right, and you can keep on adding new details if you wanted to try something more, right? But that's some of the basic ideas on adding a shield. Uh, so uh, yeah, I hope this can be useful for you. And I guess I can put this thing also into my whole scene. So I'm gonna go do a control uh, D twice for this guy, and this guy maybe control D twice. This guy control D twice. Yeah, should be enough. And I'm gonna do a merge visible. Not much down merge visible. That's my shield here. And I can apply that to my scene here. I have a lot of things here already, but I can add a few more things for sure. <laughs> right, so probably gonna be easier. I don't want it to create a whole lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and just insert it in my scene and put it somewhere behind the swords laying on the ground Something like that. You can of course make it look a bit more fancier by holding on Ctrl Shift and click on the metal part. Ctrl Shift A to grow all. I uh, mean, not that part. Yeah. And these guys will have a, like a, a metal, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do a VST uh, standard brush. I'm gonna use the MRGB color fill object. That way we can change back to basic material. And our model will look like this. I um, also need to do that to this guy, though. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it for some of the techniques you can do to create weapons.
uh, other than this is all about you being patient adding more details if you need to do that uh, of course if we look at what's going on to the sword right there is some work here too like creating a snake hat for example or you know having those smaller breakups and those are all built in similar ma matter you can see also here on the very end of the sword I have those uh, uh, Reading right something and then I think there are yeah there are two snakes right in there too so it's all about how much attention and time you you spend on it that will allow you to get some really nice looking uh, results all right that's it for this video thanks for watching see you next time